You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com. The Options Insider Radio Network is sponsored by Fidelity Investments. Fidelity's Option Trade Builder tool can help you confidently build an options trade in three simple steps. Just choose a strategy, select a contract, and then review the benefits and risks of the trade. Learn more about Option Trade Builder at fidelity.com backslash options. Options trading entails significant risk and is not appropriate for all investors. Certain complex option strategies carry additional risk. Before trading options, contact Fidelity Investments by calling 800-544-5115 to receive a copy of the characteristics and risks of standardized options. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSC SIPC. So welcome again uh, to Philip Capital's Trading Asia. And... Thank you for all again, right, for answering those questions honestly. So please give yourself a round of applause. So in our world today of fake news and um, name calling, how easy for us to put people in boxes, right? So there's us and there's them. There's those we trust and those we don't those that seem to be one of us and those we don't understand, those we share a common experience with and those there is nothing to share. Yuvia, the author of uh, Homo Deus, she says, he shares the story of how we humans or even Homo sapiens got to rule the world. In fact, 100,000 years ago, the world looked very different. There were many species of human beings, not just one. Um, and so, for example, there was the Nanthrotrophs. Uh, but we, the Homo sapiens, became the most dominant animal in planet Earth. There are now seven billion of us. So why? But there's actually two reasons for that. We like to think it's because we individuals are so unique, so intelligent. But the reason why we are ruling the world today is because of who we are on a collective level together, not as an individual. In fact, if you compare yourself to a chimpanzee, you, chimpanzee, desert island, right? Deserted island, who will survive? Most likely the chimpanzee, right? So we are the only animals that like to cooperate, right? The difference is that we're the only animals that like to cooperate on very large numbers in a very flexible way. Insects can do this, but they only can do it in a very fixed way, in a fixed method. In fact, but elephants can be flexible and work together, but only very small numbers. So the power of us is because we're able to do something together in a very big way, right? So imagine you have 1,000 humans, you put it in this room, versus 1,000 chimpanzees. Who will create more things? Who will be have stability. To chimpanzees, there'll be just complete disorder, right? So think about it. Countries, governments, corporations, concentration camps, even this Trading Asia event that we put a lot of work together to goes, both good, evil, all these are because we are um, doing this together in a large number, right? So the question is, what enables human beings to operate flexibly? What makes us be able to work together? Again, this author explains that it is actually our imagination, our ability to create stories about ourselves and make everyone in those believe in the stories. Think about it. Okay, animals, 
use language, right, to describe reality. Run, the lion is coming, right? That's what they say. But we, instead, human beings, we create stories how whoever kills the lion will wear the lion mane and then he will inherit the lion's power. And therefore, one of us must kill the lion, right? We create these stories. Think about it, even in our financial world, money is a story, right? That everyone believes that if I can use this piece of paper, I can exchange for something. So it is only because we have the ability to believe in the story of the money that it exists. And now we're all in the financial markets, we're in derivative markets, we know, we tell all these different stories. So what are the stories that we tell today? What, what are the stories that we tell our family, our friends today? There is a new phenomenon recently that socialist Bradley Campbell and Jason Manning had observed. It started first in the universities very recently in, in um, about 2014, and then spread essentially to politics in America too. And the culture is called victimhood. In this culture, very interestingly, where the victim becomes the highest rank in the society. And this compares where the older culture we had, which is a dignity culture, it is based on a moral shared by people and refers to a certain status that we obtain, either by performance or rank. So in the dignity culture, it was based on what one did, right, and what one was. So the main difference, if you think about it, between these two cultures, victimhood and dignity, it is quite scary. And um, it's that victimhood is based on what others have done to you, right? So it is not based on what you have done. And while I am not saying that real abuse doesn't happen or things, evil things have not existed, well, I'm not saying that these things, we should fight against it, we should speak against it. The problem of the culture of victimhood is that it creates incentives for people to look for offenses on the other side, right? Because you only grow ranked higher when you can say bad about what that person done to you. So with this culture on the rise and fueled, right, by social media, we see many things that divide us. Me too versus screw you, right? Partisan blue versus red. Race, black or white. I heard this new term before, I thought it was hilarious. Uh, mansplain versus explain. Open versus protectionism. And as the tariff trade war between the two largest economies in the world, China and US, intensifies, it is very unclear, right, who will suffer more. China accuses of US trying to slow down the rise of China economy. You know, just like the jealous big brother to a younger brother, US accuses China of intellectual property thefts, unfair trade practices, and abuse. And the rest of us, Asia, Europe, we who have benefited from the rise of China, if somehow China's expansion is on hold, we suffer too. There's a direct impact. So in these different wars with us, there's a common threat that lies in that belief the ancient belief of scarcity. What is mine cannot be yours. And I think on reflection, the idea of scarcity is a, almost like a myth or maybe something that we inherit from our um, hunter-gatherer days, right, to an assessment in our brain. Think about it, in the, that world, there was a real danger if you didn't get the food that day because you actually go hungry in bed, right? If there is scarcity, there is real scarcity. But in today's modern world, with zero marginal cost, there is abundance, there is production, there is a bigger world. The mentor of Winston Churchill said these words. His name is Balkan Cochran. He's an American orator. And he said, there is enough for all. The earth is a generous mother she will provide in plentiful abundance food for all her children, and if they will, but cultivate her soil in justice and in peace. So in the earlier collective exercise, 
I wanted you to see that suddenly that's us, right? That's us. We who love to drink coffee and sing in the bathroom. We who love watching Korean drama. We who believe in ghosts. We who are in love and we who are brokenhearted. We who feel alone and sad and we who are afraid and we who are brave to save a life. Yes, suddenly there's us. So this is a battle cry to all of you, to all of us. By ourselves, we are alone in our thoughts and can do little. But together, we can change the world. We can literally change the world. This is a battle cry to take personal responsibility towards understanding and empathy. It is a call for us to share our world because there is enough for all. It is a call to create more room and space for others to be different. It is a call to be a positive force instead of throwing gas to the fire of negativity and blame. It is a call to allow ourselves to fail and also allow others to fail. It is a call for a more compassionate society, to, even to ourselves and to others. It's a call to seek a deeper truth. So remember, that's us. So will you join me in that revolution, that thought? So I want to la um, leave you the last words by um, Anne Frank, uh, who was um, in a, hiding under the Nazi regime. Uh, and later on, she, was, uh, she died in the concentration camp. So she wrote in her diary, I still believe, in spite of everything, that people are truly good at heart. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the program. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. 